Thank you, GJ. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, indeed, my name is David Kuvoga. Um, I'm the operations manager for Pende Door Conservation, uh, based out uh, in Wange, Zimbabwe. Uh, Pende Door Conservation, its vision is to create a conducive environment where Pende Dogs can thrive. With this in mind, we are based out in Wange National Park, close to a major stronghold for Pende Dogs. We also work in the Mid Zambezi Valley, and we are based out at Manapus. Wange National Park is close to my heart. Uh, this is where I spent the early days of my life uh, with my father when he worked for National Parks. Uh, my father has just since retired after 42 years. We would see all kinds of wildlife around the Wange National Park. And at some point we were catching uh, pythons, as you can see there. The, this python, to be specific, had caught two chickens that you can see there. And uh, my father being my father is like, you know, we have to take care of this python. We have to catch it and we have to beg it and take it to a safer place. So I was introduced early on to uh, game capture and uh, human wildlife conflict as I know it now. So my tentative years uh, uh, in Wange, my early years in Wange were really special to me. Now coming to the animal that I love. The panda dog. The panda dog is quite unique. It's a, it is a matriarchal system, highly social, led by an alpha female. And uh, these uh, alpha females, uh, they detect where the dogs will hunt, uh, where they will den, where they will rest, uh, as they really command the pack uh, through difficult uh, areas uh, within the protected areas and sometimes out of the protected areas. They have a beautiful coat that you can see there. With, uh, some gold, black, and white. When they are born, they are black and with uh, white tails, and they get this uh, uh, wonderful uh, coating as they grow older. They also have these oval shaped ears which help them with uh, the hearing. They are probably better at hearing than they are with their sense of smell. And again, they are able to detect danger from other predators, could be lions or hyenas, which are big nemesis for uh, painted dogs. They like playing around with their pups. They create these social bonds, which help them uh, later in life, really, to protect themselves, to go on their hands. They understand each other. They take care of each other. Um, and indeed, uh, they're really special at that. They are designed for these long runs, 52, 56 kilometers per hour, uh, for five kilometers at least on the hunt. They have long legs, they have these ears that can help them to hear, they can also help them to cool down, really beautiful. And when they make that kill, it's the pups that feed first. The pups go onto the kill and they feed, they're given an opportunity, and the adults come later, they take care of the sick, when uh, one of the pack members is sick, they bring them food, they regurgitate food to it, they lick their wounds to make sure that they are well, and they come back and help the pack. Because you have to know that painted dogs, the pack is everything. So it is important that they make sure they treat uh, the, the other pack members so that they are fit to join the pack. Uh, it is critical, I'm sure even for us during this time, to make sure that we care, take care of one another. They are not wanton killers, as some might uh, have that view. Once they've hunted and they've uh, taken what they need, they will lie there in the impala and the kudu and the water park who just go around the plains very safe from the painted dogs. But a hungry painted dog is not a friend of an impala, but they only take what they need. They're not like our domestic dogs. Um, even if they met, they will not be able to have puppies. Uh, but they have some similarities in the sense that some of their mannerisms, like playing around and scratching, you would really think they are like uh, your domestic dog, but painted dogs are not. They're also not like hyenas. As you can see on the left, that's a painted dog on your right. That's your hyena right there. And just from here, I can see the painted dog. It's much more beautiful than the hyena. 
but painted dogs um, uh, are much lighter compared to hyenas. They're not actually even friends. Uh, when painted dogs meet hyenas, a solitary hyena, they would go after it, as in this picture. And the same with hyenas. If they see solitary dog or puppies that are not attended to, they'll kill them. It's just the natural way that uh, uh, predators eliminate uh, competition. So this is the painted dogs that I love um, and that I hope after this, everybody else will love them as well. So, in Africa, at the turn of the century, there were half a million painted dogs roaming around Africa. And currently, we have under 7,000 dogs, which is quite amazing how we have lost so many painted dogs. Um, this is because, uh, for one, there was a law that was enacted uh, in Zimbabwe in 1916 that if you come with a tail of a painted dog, uh, you, meaning you have killed a painted dog, you'll be paid at least five, five pounds. And we lost a lot of painted dogs um, in Zimbabwe at that time. Uh, in 1975 alone, 3,404 dogs were killed. And that's what has led to these populations declining. And many other countries had other uh, means of uh, uh, getting rid of what they called vermin, uh, uh, at, uh, which were painted dogs were regarded as pests. So painted dogs has come in with uh, research, uh, all kinds of research to make sure that we understand uh, uh, this animal. And with this research, we make sure that we go out there and we track and we monitor uh, the dogs that are in these protected areas, that we know them better. How do we know them better? We put these collars on the dogs. We have VHF collars. We have uh, a GPS collars that helps us to really monitor and track the dogs we also take uh, blood samples each time uh, a painted dog is sedated with a professional and it's on the ground. We take blood samples, we take tissue samples so that we understand um, the species itself. The tracking and monitoring helps, helps us to understand the behavior of the animal, uh, where it dance, how it inter interacts with other predators. And we come up with uh, these kind of maps that can really show us the home ranges and how uh, these uh, uh, packs are interacting with each other. Where do the uh, territories overlap and how uh, do they interact with each other? You can also see how they move out of these protected areas and this also helps us to deploy our anti-poaching uh, units uh, strategically. Uh, we also have to collect SCAT. Uh, this is quite uh, important so that we can uh, see how uh, painted dogs are doing health-wise. We can also see what they're preying on so that uh, we're in a position to uh, advocate for uh, protection of the prey base for painted dogs. We also uh, do capacity building. We have several students uh, from universities that have come through us, uh, they learn from us, and we also work with their universities so that we can advance uh, the research that we do, we can advance the understanding that we have uh, of the species that we want to protect. We also go into these communities so that we can uh, employ social science, uh, which helps us to understand the thinking of the communities, how they perceive this wildlife, how they perceive the painted dogs. Uh, in that way, we'll be able to be in a position to uh, protect them or at least to employ strategies that to speak to the populations that are around Wangke National Park. Um, for example, there was a myth that uh, painted dogs spread rabies to communities, to the domestic dogs, but it's vice versa. So by interacting with the people, we now have vaccination programs to protect their domestic, to vaccinate their domestic dogs so that they don't uh, give rabies to the uh, painted dog populations that are inside the park. So rabies is amongst uh, some of the threats that we have uh, uh, realized through our research uh, that are a big threat to painted dogs. But also uh, snails are a big threat uh, to painted dogs. We have deployed uh, anti-poaching units. Uh, we currently have a skistrin, uh, strong team that goes out there and removes all the snails that they can find. 
it is critical that we have boots on the ground so that we can deal with this uh, threat uh, right away. Um, we are supported by two canine dogs, which really enhance our capabilities on the ground. When we find injured dogs in the bush, um, we determine the severity of the uh, injury at that point. The dog is sedated by professional and we remove the snare. We can put some wound powder and uh, put some uh, long-acting antibiotic on it and we let it go back to the pack. But if it's injured uh, badly, we have to take it to a rehab facility. This is a world-class rehab facility which has housed over 80 dogs since inception in 2002. It is through these interventions that we are able to create new packs, we are able to treat the sick and the injured dogs. It was through this rehab facility that we had a dog that came to our facility, Vosilia. She was malnourished, we opened the gates, she went in and we fed her and together with other dogs that were in the rehab, we released her back into the wild. And after following her, after release, we found her with a litter. And it is now from that litter that we can track 137 dogs from just that one intervention. We believe that every dog counts. And then every in intervention that we do is critical to making sure that we help uh, dependent dogs from extinction. Loss of quality habitat is yet another threat to dependent dogs. The more there's pressure inside the park from other predators and there's an increase of human habitation outside of the park, pende dogs are found being pushed into these marginal areas, which are often these community areas where it's a hot spot for poaching. Mpindo Park, which uh, many of you know, found itself in one of these areas. And we had to go there, do a lot of awareness before we removed the pups and took them to Manapos. But awareness is critical to sensitize people, to make sure that people are aware of the consequences of living next to wildlife and also how they want to really relate to the wildlife that is next to them. And uh, we must say we have really a community around Wanga National Park that has slowly over the years uh, become accustomed and has more often than not really called the necessary authorities to come and remove uh, uh, these animals from their communities without harming them. We have drilled boreholes to make sure that people have those needs that they uh, uh, quest for. Uh, people have come to us through our community meetings. They want water. We're in Region 5 in Zimbabwe. It's, it's a dry area. There's no water. and We provide the water. We also provide nutritional gardens for the kids at the school so that they stay at school, they are fed at school, and they keep on with their education, which is critical for communities to develop so that there is no thoughts of going out and, and porch. We also have to bring people together at some point. So every second Saturday we run what is called the dog run, stay fit um, and make sure people that people socialize, get to know each other. And at the same time, we have a soccer league that we have sponsored for some time now. Uh, all the young people are into teams, about 20 of them, and they have their own league. And it helps them during uh, weekends to really socialize and do something that is more productive than going out and being in trouble with the law, with the poaching. We have a community that stood up and said, we don't want to see all these snares around our forests or around our villages because it's not only killing the wildlife but it's at the same time killing our goats it's killing our cattle and we have to do something about it and they came and started their voluntary uh, volunteer program and our support to them is uh, some kind of uniform and we have employed someone who helps them with the management of the team so that they can do the work themselves it is these community members that uh, the front line to making sure that poachers don't go into the protected areas and wildlife is protected. And we have such a man. Jealous Mpof is from Lupote, which is a community just uh, next to Wanga National Park. He's an icon in pendant dog conservation and around the world. He has won many awards and he's going through this uh, 
clip that I'm going to play, you're going to see the impact of how people that are from these communities have on protecting the natural resources and how we can uplift these people. We employ a lot of local people, people like Jealous, who have come from very humble backgrounds and we've trained them up to become real experts, real specialists in their field. I'm the head tracker of Painted Dog Conservation. Uh, it's a moving signal. Dogs. Jealous has won two conservation awards, one from Disney, one from the Van Tienhoven Foundation. He's a role model, not only to the children that come to the bush camp, but our own staff and to the community. Maybe they're coming this way. He's an expert in his field when it comes to tracking dogs. This time of the year, the dogs, they got uh, pups. So we need to see what kind of movement are they doing. I love my painted dogs. And his status in the community has really risen. I mean, he's quite an ambassador for PDC. Hi, right, Jealous. Good morning, Peter. How are you? All right, thanks. Oh, How was nice. the... Uh... Oh, this morning we just went looking for Malpa Pig. And his life has changed immeasurably because of painted dog. I okay, will see you later then, yeah? Okay, thank you very much. Brilliant. So that's Jealous for you. We. As painted dog conservation, we want to make sure that we have communities that are responding to the challenges of conservation, like Jealous, who raised his hand and chose to be part of the solution. So we also have the Children's Bush Camp, which is part of us, our, our plan to make uh, a lot of more jealousies in the future. So the future is education, and the future is children. Painted Dog Conservation is an environmental education program that seeks to educate the kids about the environment. The children come to our children's bush camp for four days and they are taught environmental issues. They are taught about trees, they are taught about animals, painted dogs, and this really helps them to understand what the environment and the ecosystem is like. They also get to view wildlife films that really takes them out of their small shell and really opens up their horizons for them to see more things, more things that they would not have seen at their schools. We take the kids on game drives so that they have a different perspective to wildlife. You realize that most of these kids would have made acquaintance with wildlife when the cattle are being eaten by the lions or their crops are being raided by elephants. And it's not a good memory that they have most of the time. But when we bring them into the park, they get to see wildlife in the open areas, in the plains, and not harming anybody. This is really true to Tuvelishe, a girl that I met when I joined the bush camp. Tubelishe, when she came to the bush camp, she was, was quiet. She was in her own shell. She was not as vocal as other kids, like Odessa on the right. Tubelishe on the left remained quiet until she was engaged. She was given an opportunity with the lecturers to really participate in all the activities. And slowly she started to come out of her shell. She was really excited at the end of the day. And when I walked past, I saw this big smile. And I said, yes, the bush camp is about teaching the kids, giving kids an opportunity, giving hope to kids that sometimes they don't have that opportunity, making sure that kids are excited about education. The children's bush camp has, since 2004, helped the kids in the local area to really get to that level. It is like me in the beginning with my father. I had to have someone that holds my hand and shows me the good things about wildlife to love them. Because we always say, if you don't know something, you will not care about it. So the bush camp is there to make sure that our kids love wildlife and they can protect it in the future. And kids get to be kids. They play, 
they uh, sometimes they are sometimes up to naughty stuff in their uh, when they are around. We know kids will be kids, um, but really this is uh, a big opportunity for them. And I would like all those that support us and those that want to support us to continue with this children's push camp. I really appreciate all those that have supported us thus far because all the support that you have given us has resulted in something tangible. As I alluded to earlier, panda dogs were regarded as vermin. They were shot at sight. But now Zimbabwe has protected the panda dogs. They are now specially protected by law. If you are found in possession of the dogs, you will be jailed for up to nine years. We are excited. It is really a dawn of a new era as far as pending dog conservation. We hope other range states for pending dogs will follow suit. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a difficult time for all of us. And I truly hope like pending dogs will be able to look after each other. will be able to support each other. And from us here at pending dog conservation in Zimbabwe, we would like to wish you all the best to take care, and until we meet, I thank you.